Richard Duncan is uh, an economist who has worked with the World Bank and the IMF. And he wrote a couple of books, uh, the first one titled uh, uh, The Dollar Crisis, and the one that's out right now is called The Corruption of Capitalism. These are must-reads, especially The Corruption of Capitalism. So everybody should get a copy of that and read it. It's very important. You can understand why all these bubbles are occurring all over the planet and uh, you know, potential ways that we can stop it. Um, so why was your book called The Corruption of Capitalism? Right, it's called The Corruption of Capitalism because I believe that capitalism has been corrupted by paper money and very large government budget deficits beginning in the 1960s. And, so and that wasn't possible under the gold standard, right? That, that's right. Yeah. And, uh, so when President Nixon broke the link between dollars and gold in 1971, that really opened the Pandora's box of uh, this global credit bubble that started at that time. And I think we have to recognize that the, the adoption of paper money has led to a period of great prosperity for the last 30 plus years. The problem is that, that prosperity was founded on paper dollar yeah. denominated debt and now the debt can't be repaid. Yeah, they borrowed prosperity out of the future and spent it today. And so paper money corrupted not only the economic process but also the political process as it became easier and easier for politicians. Well, in the past, when budgets had to balance and the, and the currency was backed by gold, politicians, if they gave money to one group of constituents, they had to tax another group or cut spending somewhere else. And this kept them honest, more or less, at least. <laughs> Semi-honest, yeah. <laughs> but once this link ended between dollars and gold, and they were allowed to run larger and larger budget deficits, then they could give uh, benefits, money. To uh, anybody. To anyone. Without having to take it from anyone else. Mm -hmm. That's except right. the inflation eventually comes back to haunt you. Well, they and just then it taxes it. everybody through inflation. They, they, they charge it to the future. Yeah. And this has allowed the lobbyist industry to grow up and become increasingly powerful. So now we have government directed by lobbyists. And if this produced a good outcome, if they actually managed the economy, if the lobbyists actually managed this government well, it would still be shameful, but it might be tolerable. But as it is, it's having disastrous consequences well, for the United States and ultimately they're managing the world. It for their own greed. For their own greed at the expense of the well-being of the country as a whole. So it has corrupted the political process as well as uh, economics and leading to a disastrous outcome. Yeah. Do you agree that if the dollar had a serious problem, a serious devaluation or goes into a hyperinflation, that since it's it's the majority of cur currency in the rest of the world, outside of the United States, there's still more dollars than all the other currencies combined. If the dollar had a serious problem and they're looking at a euro or uh, RMB or, you know, a Sing dollar, whatever, the Thai bot, do you think that they could say, oh my gosh, this is just a piece of paper with numbers on it too. I better <laughs> get rid of this and buy something tangible. Well, very possibly. The, the, the whole global economy, globalization itself, has been driven by the U.S. trade deficit, which peaked at $800 billion a year a couple of years back. That's $2 million a minute that the United States was going into debt to the rest of the world. That caused the rest of the world to prosper, boom, as we bought more and more from the rest of the world. But if the dollar became valueless, or if the rest of the world became reluctant to accept dollars, then the rest of the world's exports would collapse, and their economies would collapse, and it would lead to extreme social tension and yeah. geopolitical repercussions. You know, empires die hard. It, uh, five years is not that long. It's 1,800 days or something like that. So this, I don't believe this is going to occur overnight or within the next year or two. In the book, I've, I've written that I think there is a five to ten year window of opportunity where the United States can still uh, get a grip on what's gone wrong with our economy and fix it. Now, I realize that it's probably not going to happen, 
they're not going to wise up. They're probably not. It's <laughs> quite unlikely, in fact. They're just going to do whatever their constituents want them to do, basically. But so. within 10 to 15 years, there's a real possibility of a kind of a disaster scenario. If we don't take steps to correct this within the next 5 to 10 years, after 10 years it may well be too late, leading to a kind of fall of Rome scenario. Yeah, I don't think we've got until 2020. I think it's going to happen within the next 3 to 8 years. But then again, I might be a little too pessimistic. It seems now that it's very difficult to distinguish between what is the difference between a dollar, a dollar bill, and dollar-denominated debt. Yeah, there isn't any difference because China holds that...